Hi guys. So, as you can see by my background, uh, we're downstairs in my kitchen, and um, and as you can tell by the title, we are filming sort of a closing episode of the Moving Diaries. I don't think I ever really closed it. I think I just left it with the floor not being done, and I think I just left it at that. I'll have to go watch the episodes again to see. I don't know. I think I I just transitioned into the vlog and left, left y'all hanging. Um, but after a conversation this weekend with, I should say, I think I left you all hanging because I didn't know how to end it. But after a conversation this weekend with a YouTube fan, subscriber, and Facebook friend, April, um, I realized I know exactly where to end it. And I would love for the whole process that I went through to help you all out there who may be going through the same sort of transition in life. Um, I won't speak to April of, uh, for April because it, that's her personal business, but uh, suffice, it to, suffice it to say she and I, I think, have a lot in common. And uh, for those that don't know and haven't watched the other episodes of The Moving Diaries, there is a playlist. I'll link it in the description below. You can watch it from day one. But the short story is my husband and I, after 26 years in our starter house, <laughs> um, decided to move out of the state of California and to, up to north to the state of Oregon. Um, he had the opportunity for a work transfer. We'd been thinking for a long time about moving and transitioning our lives to a place that was more affordable to live. Um, those of you who know, know the state of California as a whole for the most part, certain areas more than others, is a very expensive place to live. Um, if you don't know, those stories that you hear on the news are probably right. Um, I am from the San Francisco Bay Area originally, a Santa Clara County, a city Santa, called San Jose, California. I'm a California native. I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, never as an adult lived anywhere else. When I was a baby, we lived in Georgia, but I was a baby. I don't really remember. I have a few vague memories, but that doesn't really count, right? Uh, my husband is from New York City, specifically Queens. So he moved to California when he was a teenager. So he'd been in California a long time and is sort of an uh, acclimated California native himself. But when the opportunity came along as our daughter was finishing college and we really thought about where we wanted to spend the next half of our lives, the final half, if you will, um, we really didn't think we wanted to stay in in. California in the Bay Area specifically that the quality of life we wanted we couldn't get there and so we made the choice to move out of the state now where we where were we going to go specifically we weren't exactly sure to start with we did a lot of researching and traveling and talking and I initially thought actually that we'd end up in Utah near my sister Elizabeth um my husband decided right away he didn't want to work at home full time. Um, although he could if he wanted, he enjoys the community and the socialization you get from going into the office. Me, I'm an introvert. I'm perfectly happy with my own company at home. Um, hello, I'm a YouTuber. Hello. Um, so, um, so that limited our choices. So then we had to decide, was he going to stay with the company? He's been with them a long time. And was he going to stay with them? Was he happy with that, at least for... The foreseeable future and um, if he was then what choices did we have for locations um, that was how Portland Oregon got chosen contrary to my daughter's belief it had nothing to do with her and when she and her fiance decided they were moving to Portland we'd already decided on Portland and we'd already started looking and they had no idea we none of us had talked to each other about it so that was pretty funny um, so we chose, chose the Portland, Oregon area. We are in a Portland suburb, and uh, we love it here. Um, it is a much quieter life. It's a um, much slower pace and uh, friendlier. Uh, you know, it's every place has crime. Every place has, you know, stupid people, and you can't get away from that. Uh, homeless is a situation across the country. Um, we are outside Portland. So some of those things aren't as prevalent where we are as they are in the city, um, but we are used to San Jose, and any of you who've been there lately in the last few years know what a 
crap hole it can be in certain parts. Um, I do miss things about California. I miss Daiso. We don't have Daiso in Oregon. Daiso, you need to come here. Uh, anyway, we don't have um, a couple of different stores. I miss. Um, there was another one called um, Mido. It was a Japanese stationery store. Um, and Muji. A lot of Japanese stores. You get a theme with me? Uh, I don't really fit in their clothes because, hello, I'm maybe short, but I'm not skinny. Uh, but I love their Japanese stationery. We just don't have a lot of that. There is a Japanese grocery store locally. I haven't been there yet. I digress. Anyway, there are a few things I miss about California, but for the most part, I'm super glad about the move. Um, we don't know anybody here. I do have family up this way, but they're a couple hours away. Um, my friends didn't live near me to begin with. All of my friends live um, in the Midwest, the East Coast. The closest one, I think, is Texas and Arizona, the clo uh, two closest two. Uh, I take that back. Lisa Swank is, lives in Northern California still. Um, but there, none of them live close to me, and I keep in contact with them via the Internet and YouTube and um, social media and apps, uh, video chat apps like Zoom. Um, so for me, that wasn't a big deal. And to be honest, although I am an introvert, you know, I'm still that person at the store that says, please and thank you. And can I help you with that? And, um, you know, I don't have any problem generally making friends when, you know, I, I want to, to be honest. So um, that hasn't been an issue. My husband's a Freemason. And although he hasn't been to the lodge yet up here, um, he feels the same way about it I do. Um, we do love it up here. And he is home more, so I'm loving having his company more. Uh, he also is only working three miles from home now. His commute is 10 minutes on a really bad day. In, in San Jose, his commute was an hour each way. Um, as we grow older, I was getting tired of, as was he, spending so much more time apart than we were together. So these are all reasons why we made the move and why I'm happy about the move that we did make. If you're considering this, you really need to weigh all your options. Um, I didn't bring the other notebook down, but one of the other um, notebooks we have, it's actually purple, but we carried that around with us everywhere um, that we traveled to for a few years prior to our move. And um, we would make notes about certain locations, the pro and con list, in the front of the notebook, the first thing we did was a wish list about our dream property and um, all the different things we wanted on the dream property. And then each location that we went, uh, the, I should say the dream property and dream location in the country. And then as we um, toured places and toured houses, we made notes about pros and cons on each place. And um, that was another way that we chose the area that we chose so that may be something, if you're thinking about making this kind of transition in life, that may be something that you're, you want to think about doing. I know it really helped us. Um, it helped me to write it down because I'm a list maker. My husband's very analytical, so it helped him too. Um, and we both would take it in the evenings and we would write in it, and it worked really well. So I would suggest doing that. I would suggest making some trips or visits to places that you're considering. Really weigh, weigh, weigh the pros and cons of um, work and social life and um, if that's going to work for you. And, you know, making new friends and meeting new people. You know, there's, you know, church and volunteer work. And, you know, if you're an artist like I am, go take a few art classes at the local art store or at the local scrapbooking shop. I'm sure you're going to meet like-minded people. Um, you know, say hello to that lady behind you in the grocery store line and, you know, chat to the clerk behind the postal counter. And, you know, I've made some friends. My jingle bells on my handbag drive them all crazy. <laughs> um, but that's okay. They drive my husband crazy too. I like them. Uh, anyway, if you don't know, I carry a keychain on the outside of my handbag. It has bells all over it and jingles everywhere I go. So anyway, there you go. Fun fact. Um, some of the things that made the move easier once we picked a place. <sighs> Help and support. Um, did we get support from everybody? No. There's still... Um, see, I'm filming this in April. We got here at the beginning of September 2018 so what is that like eight months there's still factions of the family that are bent 
that we didn't ask their permission and get their okay to make this move away from them. I'm going to just let that sink in. Because at 55 years old, I need to ask people. <laughs> Evidently, I don't know. But that being said, we had a faction of the family, my sister Elizabeth included, um, and I love you, Elizabeth, uh, you know that, and um, uh, my dear friend Cindy Utter and others, I'm sure I'm forgetting a whole bunch of people. My friends, Cindy, all of my online friends, Cindy Utter, Peg Robinson, Vicki Brown, Carla McCants, um, Shel C., um, Leslie McGrath, they were all super supportive about the move, and as were a lot of you that were watching the progress. Um, a fam close family, my sister Elizabeth was super supportive. My parents um, live up this way. They were more than jazzed. I haven't lived within three hours of them in like 20 years, so um, they were very supportive about it. In fact, they helped us with the closing process on this house, so that was invaluable. Um, I will say get help if you can because help, help is great. My sister is, all of us in the family are compulsive. <laughs> We're, we all are probably borderline OCD. I know I've been diagnosed with anxiety disorder as has my sister. Um, what does that mean? Why is that relevant? Because she's more compulsive than I am. She's also moved a lot more than I have. So she is invaluable for me when it came to the process of packing up my house, the logistics of moving, of finding the new utility services, of clearing things with the moving company, of getting the rental cars, having an extra driver to drive our vehicles here because we had some things that didn't go on the moving truck, but we still had our two vehicles. Well, there's only Bob and I. So we needed a third hand. And of course she said, if you fly me out there, I'll be happy to drive Bob's sports car to the new house. She wasn't going to say no to that. Um, she was invaluable. So I would say my first tip to you is get some help if you can. Um, hire a moving company. Uh, don't, if you can afford it, hire a moving company. I'll, there you go. So we had the option. We were lucky enough this time we moved. We didn't last time. Um, we were young kids last time and we didn't own nearly as much stuff um, but this last time we had the option to hire somebody to move the bulk of our belongings um, we went with United Van Lines and I will link their site in the description below uh, it's a nationwide company we used a local to our area in California franchise but they are a nationwide company they did a very nice job um, there were some things they couldn't or wouldn't move on the truck or that were too expensive for them to create and ship like my paintings. It was really astronomical. So we packed some things ourselves and rented a U-Haul, put them on the U-Haul truck, and then some things in the back of my Subaru, some things in his sports car, and drove it all up here in a day uh, after we closed. Everything else went on the moving truck. I will say some, t I'll, I'll, let me give you some hints for that. So number one, interview a couple moving companies, get some bids, go with your gut instinct on who you think you can trust or not. That's super, super, super important. Um, look for referrals, look for reviews. Um, we did all of those things and we chose United Van Lines. Um, boxes, packing material, bubble wrap. We have found that there are a lot of people moving all the time. So go to Craigslist, the free Craigslist site. Go to Nextdoor, nextdoor.com. If you don't know what that is, it's a neighborhood bulletin board, virtual bulletin board site. And um, you can sign up for your local area where you're currently living and see if anybody has moving boxes or packing materials. And um, that for free, a lot people give them away for free. If they sell them, it's not that expensive, much less than buying them new. Um, so try that first. Always, of course, try you know your stores. Um, your um, if they let you, you can go into the dumpsters and you know look for bubble wrap and that kind of thing. Um, you also can just buy packing material. Um, you know, in San Jose, we had, of course, the U-Haul store sold packing material, but we had a lot of stores in San Jose that just, that's all they sold was packaging materials. 
Um, and you could go there for whatever size boxes and reams of paper and bubble wrap and all that stuff. So, um, look for free first. We did spend a lot of money on packaging materials. I got tired of looking for the free stuff, but <laughs> don't be lazy like I was. Um, and there's always people out there. And I know when we got here, we signed up for the new next door neighborhood for the new house. And we turned around and we paid it forward and we gave away all of our packing materials to people who could use it. So um, that's the other thing when you get to your destination. Um, you know, it's really daunting to be unpacking things and, oh my God, what do I do with all this cardboard, all this paper, all that bubble wrap? Um, and hauling it to the disposal place in your new name. You may not even know where that is where you can take it. Um, and if you do, it's, you know, if it's like an organ, it's not necessarily free to dump it. Some of it they'll take, but some of it they won't. So um, give it away to somebody else who could use it. That's probably a better use of it. Uh, don't take, feel like you have to take everything on your truck. I know it's really tempting, believe me. I have anxiety to sort of remember. There was a lot of stuff. I just was on my last nerve about and the whole process was so stressful I just couldn't let go of it onto a truck that's, that's really honest I just couldn't uh, in retrospect I should have just let him pack it um, there were some things I thought they wouldn't pack because when we had the pre-interview for the packing um, the guy who came by said, no, they're not going to take any of your paint. They're not going to take any of your liquids. It's hazardous material. When the guys came that day to pack, they would have packed. He told me, no, we would have packed it. Um, so yeah, that was, that was confusing. I, and you know, there are funny stories that you hear about the packing process where you hear, you know, if you want to take the garbage bag can out of the kitchen, make sure it's empty of trash because they'll pack it they will. I had a can of Clorox wipes and a cutting board on the kitchen counter at the old house. I was going to leave there. And um, the day of packing, the day of moving, those days are super busy. And despite the fact that I had my sister there helping me, um, we both missed it and we forgot to tell the guy packing the kitchen and he packed them the can of Clorox wipes, which was open. Yeah, that was. <laughs> so I have them here. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, I didn't. He didn't pack the garbage, but um, that was because I emptied it. But uh, yeah, so you know, be careful of that. As a creative and somebody who has issues, uh, the one of the smart things that I did early on, as I was packing up the art room, was pack myself a bug out, an art bug out bag. Um, it was my travel suitcase plus an extra bag of materials that I could have to keep me sane through the process. Um, above and beyond the obvious of my electronics. So some of the things you don't want to put on the truck if you've not moved in a long time. Common sense, no personal paperwork, no money, no jewelry, no valuables, no computers. Um, you want to take those things in your possession. You don't want them on a moving truck. Um, so um, besides all of that and the electronics and the iPads, I made sure I had my art bug out bag. And that did save my sanity more than once during the process, especially since when we got here, I was able to unpack the, whole, unpack the whole house except the art room because we were waiting to get a floor installed, which took like three months longer than it was supposed to. Um, that was a whole other conversation. Go back and watch the moving diaries. It's in there. Um, so that was a smart thing I did. Should I have taken so many art supplies on the U-Haul truck? Probably not. Um, so, you know, but you have to listen to yourself and what you're going to be comfortable with and what's going to stress you out the least through the process. It's going to be stressful. Resign yourself to that. No matter how happy you are about the move and the final destination, it's going to be stressful. So if you can't let go of things onto the moving truck, just be okay with that. Um, get some help and just let, and just bring it with you. One thing I did as soon as I realized it was really real and that we want to bid on a house is I made this. This is what I was talking to April about last night and she said, oh my God, have you done a video on that? Well, no, but we will right now. Um, this is a moleskin, uh, 
weekly notebook 2018 to 2019. Um, it is uh, I think like the five and a half by eight and a half size. It's like five and a half by eight and a half um, or something like that. This is for better lack of a better word. This is my um, new house journal or new house Bible. So as soon as we won a bid on a house and we started the moving process and I accumulated a stack of cards and paperwork and stuff, I realized that at some point I needed to, at some point in the process, you need to keep referring back to, okay, what's that moving company's number? What was that paperwork they gave us? What was um, that information the realtor gave you? What was, you know, when is this truck showing up? When are the utilities being hooked up? When is the cable guy coming? When is the carpet cleaner coming? You get the idea. So at some point, instead of somebody constantly asking me all these questions, I started getting, I got a notebook and I started writing it down. Um, I'm not going to show you the contents of every section because there's some personal information in here. I love you all, but I don't want it on there, on the internet. But the very first page right behind here, <laughs> um, you can see it says home details. So that is the uh, mailing address and a picture of our new house. And we are in a HOA community with a community mailbox. So one of the things I put on there was our mailbox number. So I wouldn't forget. It did come in handy for like the first two months because I constantly was like, wait, what mailbox? Um, I also at the during the moving process, I we stopped for Chinese food. I think it was on the drive up, and I got a fortune cookie quote. It says, "Love first, then everything will follow." I just thought that was perfect, so I stuck it in there. Um, the next section is um, contacts. Um, so on the next section, I put contacts. So this is where I put. Um, our financial guy, our moving uh, people, the two people caught to contact from the moving company. Um, th we are in an HOA, so the HOA's number, the um, number for the elementary school next door because they own the woods next to my house, so when there's an issue, I call them. Um, contractors, house cleaners, carpet cleaners, a lot, the alarm people, the direct TV people, Comcast, sewer, water, garbage, power, you get the idea. Then I have the to-do list of things that I needed to or wanted to do as we moved in or right after, which some of these things have been done and I haven't finished highlighting or crossing them off. Um, there's a section for Wi-Fi, for all the Wi-Fi information, for the alarm company information, um, old house paint colors, because I do really like the colors we painted in our old house, and I wanted to make sure to journal them, and as we move in and make it made improvements, I wanted to use some of these colors here inside the new house, and we had a large wall here in the kitchen that's on the other side of the camera that when we bought the house was blood red for lack of a better word. It was more on the pink tone, but it was very, it looked like blood. Um, before we even had a stitch of furniture in here, I had a contractor here paint, painting the house. That wall had to go. Um, so I used this green color, which is called Green Silence. It's a Kelly Moore color. Um, so a section for some ideas on new light fixtures, which I need to update and um, we have some interesting light fixtures in the house. We've replaced a few, but as the time goes on, we need to do more of that. Um, the information on the floor in the art room. Um, bug, the bug people. You always, you gotta have a pest control. You own a house, you gotta have pest control people you can call. Um, so we use Active Environmental, and I have a section for them. So when I, you know, have an issue or I wanna make sure they're coming out for their regular quarterly service or whatever that I can call them. Um, business cards. Um, so I ha collect a lot of business cards from different people. I may want to refer back to at some point. Um, so I collect them and put them in here, uh, like our State Farm guy and uh, uh, Ky Kyla from the um, Budget Blinds and um, the plumber and the new girl who's doing my hair and um, the veterinarians that were helping us with Bandit and stuff like that. 
uh, then a section for the garbage company uh, because <laughs> Oregon does garbage a lot differently than we did in California and I constantly have to refer back to these two brochures which I'll show you wait uh, yeah include like pages of what we can and can't recycle what goes where and yeah so it's different so I have to have that in here because I refer to it all the time uh, AT&T uh, plumbing and furnace people um, the ones that the old owners were using and other people who have been recommended for us when it comes time to get this the system for, uh, serviced which will be probably around August I got people I can call already um, contractors uh, specifically contractors um, I have electricians and I also we have a new general contractor that we are going to be using and I've got his information in here we're about ready to paint the outside of the house and these are the colors we're going to be painting outside this is for the, all the doors and um, so that's in here my sister is a feng shui uh, person and um, when she was here we went over um, some things about the, house, the new house and to make sure that the energy uh, was good and that things were placed in the right place and she took some compass readings and uh, I sent her um, some sketches of the floor plan and um, later on she, um, there's a glue, a little bit of glue, uh, later on she sent me a report on our house and what, where were the best places to put certain things to maintain the good energy and flow in the house. And um, she also sent me some maps with directions on them. I don't completely understand it, but I trust her. So, you know, it's all good. There's a cup, I don't remember why she sent me the compass, but their compass is in here too with the colors. I think it has something to do with the house because there's degrees on here. Um, and then the, this, now the nice thing about this is this also has um, calendar. Now these, these things up here, I put in the front of the book over where the monthly calendar, month at a glance was. I didn't, I knew right away I wasn't going to use that for what it was intended. So I used it to make my sections. Um, and there's plenty of room in here to add more. Uh, and then the way this journal is set up, let me see if I can find the first one. The way this journal is set up then after that it has a week at a glance. Whoop, there we go. And so I used those. <sighs> can you tell this is the week that we moved? <laughs> to make notes. On the left side is the days of the week and what was going to happen certain days. And on the right side is just a sheet of note paper. And that's where I made all a lot, all sorts of notes about what was happening that week. Uh, things that I needed to be remindful of. Things that I needed to let other people know, out of, know of. Um, things that maybe went wrong. We were only here a few days and we had our first HOA meeting, so I wrote that down. Uh, plumbers, tree inspections, um, you know, appointments with the insurance company to change over the insurance and more. So I can't tell you how invaluable it was to have this book. And this, this was in part of that bug out bag. So this never left my hands. Um, I will say that if you're gonna create some of the, something like this to take with you, uh, along with whatever else you need to keep you sane through the move, um, that you're going to need a journal, you're going to need a glue stick, or some tape runner, or both. I made the little sections easy, simple, DIY way. Masking tape. <laughs> I didn't, you know, masking tape. It's what I had. Yes, I have tabs. and They were packed. Masking tape works. It doesn't have to be pretty. It can just be plain masking tape. Um, and I did use a labeler. My labeler did stay with me. I have a brother, P-Touch, and the label, the label sticker paper is that 0.23 inch. So it's like a quarter inch label paper. Um, 
And that's what I used to make the labels, the tabs on here. I'm sorry, we're at the dining room table. I pushed on it and it just moved a little bit. Anyway, so that's what I did. And yes, it's fat and chunky and it's probably gonna get fatter as the year goes on. Um, and this one goes through the end of 2019. So I'm able to, um, and I still am using it um, to keep track of things that are happening appointments, phone numbers, um, each week. It's not nearly as full as it when we once when we you know was when we first moved and the and the weeks all you know looked like this. But that's okay with me. Um, but it does still come in handy. It sits out here on the kitchen counter um, and um, you know everybody knows where it is so they can refer back to it. Uh, and if there's big pieces of paper um, like HOA stuff or something um, that people need to be mindful of it I set it underneath the journal and it's, yeah, there's a little, you can't really see it here, but let's see, right there. Yeah, there's a, the counter, the counter is up high up there for the island, but then there's a little shelf down here, like a telephone shelf, only we don't have a landline. So we use it for the chargers for the cell phones and this sits up there. Um, so that works well for me. I hope this gives you all some ideas of what you can uh, do uh, regarding a big move or a big change like this you might make. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to make the change. As you're packing and you're deciding what to take with you and whatnot, if you're sure you don't want it, by all means, sell it or donate it. If you're not sure, just like with the KonMari method, if you're not sure, hang on to it. Um, if You know, there's things that we brought with us we weren't sure about. Turns out it's a good thing we kept them because we could use them in the new house. There are some things that we got rid of, I don't miss them. Um, we had a big patio set, table and chairs, and it was really nice. I'm glad we sold it before we left because it wouldn't fit in the new, the new back, back uh, yard is not that big. It's little. It's a little big house on a little lot, um, which is okay with me, I don't like yard work. Anyway, um, so really think about what you're bringing. And you know, if you can, if you're hiring a mover and you've everything, because you're really just not sure, just bring it. You can always have a garage sale when you get there. Uh, we did a lot of donating. I didn't want to be bothered with garage sales, but you know, that's a personal choice on my part. And we just made sure we got receipts so we could use the tax write off. Um, we knew we were going to need all the help on that, you know, stretch that we could get. So, what else? I'm thinking. Um, one thing we didn't do that we should have been more mindful of, we, you know, had tax, things like tax records going back to 1998 to present day. You don't need that many. I didn't need to pay somebody to move them either. Uh, so just, you know, as you're packing, if you've been in your house a long time, like we were 26 years at our house. Um, you know, as you're unpacking each closet and putting it in a box, just take a second look at things. And if, you know, if you're just over it, even if you've spent money on it, donate it, give it to a friend, sell it at a garage sale, pass it on to somebody who's going to love it more. And don't bring the old clutter with you to the new space. I would love to see you all have bright, open, happy spaces that you enjoy. And if you, of course, have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them down below. Um... You can do like April did and, and direct message me and I'll get back to you, I promise. Um, it is a stressful process. It's not an easy one. Um, I don't know that it's any less stressful if you've been in your house just a few years versus over 20. Um, the whole process is just stress inducing. If you have somebody like my sister who loves to clean and organize, that's her jam. She's a pro at moving. She's done it a lot of times. Don't be afraid to ask for help. The worst they can do is say no. There's no crime in that. But ask for help. I'm sure you have help. We have had help on the California end, and we had help on the Oregon end, so it was great. I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. Think about making a home uh, moving journal, a new home journal, home, bi home Bible, whatever you want to call it. Um, I will also say one final thought. Keep all your receipts. Um, anybody who's had a house for a long time should already know this, but some don't. I'm always surprised at that. When you get a house, you should be keeping every receipt for everything you fix at the house ever. 
it's deductible when you sell the house. Um, whether it's repairing broken plumbing, we put in a new furnace and air conditioner at the old house, we put in a new kitchen, we put in new windows, we also repaired the fences a bunch of times, did some painting, um, you know, you fix a cracked this, you fix a broken that. All of those receipts, you save them. You make a lifetime expenses report on your computer somewhere. When the receipts come in, you log them in, then you file them away. When you move, you take those receipts with you in your car and that computer with the spreadsheet on it. Make sure that's in a safe, secure place because when you file your taxes, that's deductible. We did that at the old house. We're doing it at the new house. In fact, I've got a thing of receipts upstairs i got to work on. <laughs> anyway, so save your receipts, uh, whether it's the cost of the moving company or rental cars or boxes or that stuff can be de can be deducted too in some circumstances so save all your receipts and when you get there talk to a tax man an accountant or somebody that you know that knows what they're doing with finances <coughs> not me <laughs> we have an accountant he said save these things so we did uh, <laughs> So consult with somebody who's in the know, but I would definitely tell you, save all your receipts, don't throw any of them away. And you might want to um, just have a little bag in addition to your little home journal um, where you have all those stuffed in. We have a box upstairs. That's it, I think. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, hit that little bell icon if you want notifications of new videos when they come out. The original episodes of The Moving Diaries along with one that I filmed about making a new sign for the art room and the house tour video of the original old house um, are all in a playlist here on YouTube and I will link that in the description below. You can watch those and catch up from day one. And um, don't forget to look uh, for my Linktree link. Um, I have a list of links over on Linktree and you can follow me on social media. My Instagram link is there, Twitter, uh, Facebook, you can follow what all the craziness I get up to. Sometimes it's not crazy, it's just boring, but sometimes it's crazy. Uh, you can also support the free content here on YouTube and over on Facebook. Um, a lot of different ways. Shop in my Etsy shop. Uh, go over to Patreon. There's some. Sometimes I load videos over to Patreon first uh, before they go here out to YouTube. So there's some of those over there. And um, you can buy my book over at Amazon. You can shop in the Amazon affiliate store. You get the idea. So go check out Linktree. And the most important thing is to breathe. Just breathe. <laughs> um, it'll be all right, I promise. It's going to be stressful. I won't lie about that. Try to stay away from the chocolate. <laughs> and if you drink, try to keep that in control. A little bit of chocolate, a little bit of alcohol. Not too much. If you're like me, you, you want to go overboard when you're stressed. So don't do that because you're not doing yourself any favors. Um, just go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Have fun with your move. Enjoy your new space. And I'm crossing my fingers for all of you. April, good luck. That's it for today. See you later. Bye, guys.